I was thinking it was Code Vein as well. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go hunt a Gosarog. I'm glad you're liking them, Leech GM. I, I sometimes have second second thoughts. I like think, man, I'm going too slow. Folks aren't gonna want to watch this, or I don't know. I'm thankful folks still want to watch them rise. Watch someone kind of master of none the weapons here in here in Rise. Didn't save the loadout. Nope, I always do it manually. I always do it manually, at least for now, so that I can kind of pick and choose on each given hunt what ammo I want to bring with me. Oh god, I'm never doing that hunt. <laughs> never doing that hunt, Zelda. Maybe someday. That quest is so that quest is so cursed. What Zelda fan is talking about is in Monster Hunter Freebie Night, it's G rank. There's a quest with two red Kezu. They both have a lot of health. They both like to fly around the map a lot. They must take close to five minutes fully to fly from one end of the map to the other, and they just do that on repeat. We're like, you can't fight them. You can't flash them out of the sky, nothing. You can just walk around and watch them fly and then try and beat them up for a little while until they decide to fly away and you get to watch them slowly fly across the map again. Ugh, that quest is so bad. Utter hell. I think, I forget what weapon I ended up using to clear it. I kept trying to clear it with Greatsword, and it was just garbage. Maybe Lance or Gun Lance is what we ended up using, I think. But man, that was, ugh, awful. That's on Twitch and YouTube somewhere if you want to watch that hell. But it, it's there somewhere. It, with an endgame Greatsword set, it would be a lot nicer. I think he's fighting the baggy more than us right now. What was hell? It was a G rank double red Kezu quest in Monster Hunter Freeman Night where they spent most of the quest duration flying through the through the swamp very slowly where you couldn't even hit them or see them really. And not actually fighting you. It'll be part of our Monster Hunter Freeman Night playlist in VODs here on Twitch or on YouTube. You're the one who gave me great sword for that IRV Gidget? I'd forgotten. I have pretty vague recollections when it comes to some of this stuff. I know it's like not that long ago, like that was a year ago, I guess. Is when we took a break from 4 Ultimate and went back and did G Rank Unite, but man, it seems like forever ago. I have a hard time remembering that stuff. Was two Black Ravios worse or better? Better than that. Legit, legitimately better than that. And like, it depends on the weapon matchup. Like, some weapons would have an easier time capitalizing against Kezu, but man, Greatsword is not a great red Kezu matchup in that game. Not when they have so much damage, they can almost one-shot one you with a lot of the moves if you if you make a wrong commitment. So it was rough. things you remember about your Freemium Night playthrough was that the Kazu hunt and that time you showed up drunk and asked you to do a random greatsword hunt so you tried the double rejang in the arena and got bodied. <laughs> that sounds about right. Oh man, Freemium Night. Jumping over Goss Ice Beam? Yep. Gonna dip out. Thanks for the conversation, Wristfish. Cheers, Monty. It was lovely to meet you. I hope I'll see you around sometime. If not, then just happy hunts. Cheers.
That is kind of weird, Zelda, it is. Forgot who it was. It sounds like an Uchi thing to me, but I could be wrong. Why it sounds like an Uchi thing to me, but it just does. on your birthday, which is a couple months, which is in a couple months. Makes sense. That's roundabout when we were playing Freemy Knight. Took a break from 4 Ultimate right at the end of high rank, or towards the end of high rank, to go and finish up our G rank Freemy Knight playthrough, which we're close to the end of. Chuck the boulder at us? No, he's not. Didn't get the chance. so fancy. Double spin from Goss is neat. Yeah, it really does, Django. It's kind of scary. I find this guy kind of unnerving. There we go. Finally got that arm break. It took a little while. Been slacking on three ultimate recently. Yeah, what what monster hunter have you been playing most recently, Zelda? I've, I've had a hard time keeping track. You know, recently you said you were kind of hanging out in some VR games. Last time I talked with you. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured. And that's okay. It's alright to take breaks. Do you have a timeline for if you're gonna play this game sometime this year, Zelda, or no? If not, that's alright. I just I'm curious. We have to release on PC. Gotcha. So like springtime. Okay. Just curious.
Yeah, I, that's what I figured. going pretty well against this goss. He's eaten. It's okay. Alright, that's both arm breaks. Um, and, and the head break. There's that. Do you think Capcom might do a remaster for Monster Hunter's 20th anniversary? I've gone on the record for saying I don't think that they're ever going to do a remaster in this series. Truly. Like, I mean, sometimes they might port a recent game to another slightly newer platform like they've done with Monster Hunter G and Monster Hunter Double Cross, but I do not think we will ever see a proper remaster in this, in this series. The best thing we might see is, like, a port of like a really popular game to a newer, really popular platform. Like we saw with Creamy Night to, to iOS. But I don't think this series lends itself easily to remasters or remakes. Cause it's like some aspects of the games are always gonna come across as archaic after all the quality of life of the newer games. So it's like, what stuff do you leave the same? What stuff do you change? And how much of, how much of that cost is worthwhile until you've spent too much money updating random things? And it's like, well, we spent a bunch of time updating Creamy Nights like I don't know, village or crafting system or AI or something, and now all of a sudden we could have just been developing a new game. Oh gosh. Whew. That's not a remaster, that's a port. It was a very recent game that they just brought to another system because they were bringing another Monster Hunter game to it. It added new features, but not many. So anyways, that's just my personal take on it. I think they're much more apt to do something like Generations. They're much more apt to bring back certain monsters and settings for a special anniversary than they are to actually remaster a game. Oh, cats. Whoops. Whoops. We'll leave them behind when he changes, uh, changes area again. Ugh. Trading. You're taking damage, you do silencer and go multiplayer, only heal people, never get targeted. Hey, I mean, like, that's one of the beauties of this game series is that there's loads of different ways to have fun with it. I don't, I don't think that there's any particular way you need to play Monster Hunter in order to be good or have fun. You can have fun doing that, and I can have fun doing this, and we can both really like the games. I didn't think you were saying anything otherwise, I just, I don't know. It's neat that there are so many different ways to enjoy this series. And, like, it's neat that over time you can kind of change how you enjoy it. If you get tired of your old way, or you just want to try something new. I know I've played these games a lot differently over the years. I didn't used to play all the weapons. Or collect really th this much gear. <laughs> Changes over time. What do you think of Crimson Glow? I haven't gotten to that point in the game yet. I haven't finished the game yet. We've been playing since launch, but I've been going really slowly through the game. 
crafting a bunch of weapons for each of the classes, clearing all the quests before moving forward in the game, and letting chat pick my weapon for a lot of the weapon matchups. So I haven't fought I haven't fought that version of that monster yet. Cluster is actually a really bad thing to wake up a monster with. Oh well. Um, didn't know monster dealt that much damage. They usually don't, Jango. I haven't upgraded my armor at all in the game because I don't want to be able to make mistakes. I don't want to be able to make a lot of mistakes, rather. Some mistakes are necessary for learning, but if if you don't take that much of a, a punishment for, for getting hit by some of the monster's big moves, you're, you're never going to actually learn to get out of the way. Alright, no worries, Zelda. Cheers. It's nice to get to talk with you. But welcome anyways, Patty Man. I'm looking forward to getting to fight that monster for the first time. I kind of figured Zelda thing. I kind of figured you weren't actually watching and just kind of listening. So I tried to not talk too specifically about some of the things we were doing or some of the, some of the things that people were brought, bringing up. Yeah, what do we need from this guy? Let's see. It's for the Goss gun. Where is the Goss gun? Did I put it in here? I hope I did. Yeah, there it is. Okay, horn, brace, fur. Cheers, Zelda. Okay. Horn, head and body carves, brace, capture body carves, broken four legs, fur, everything. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and wait, what was it for horn? I can't I was such a, I have such a bad memory. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. Horn is body carves, so that means let's let's do this. Let's go off. Did I leave the cats behind? I think I did. Get our, sticky, get, our, get our end of the fight sticky cheese in. We'll get some Tigrex materials here real quick. Let's do we already fight this guy? I forget. Did he drop anything there? He didn't. Okay, we already fought him then. Oh, dude, some of those follow-ups are vicious. Really vicious from him. I think we ate for insurance. I'm really, really glad I did. Some of these attacks just come out and just almost instant kill us. I think I probably had a little bit reduced health there, but man, spooky. Spooky stuff. be pretty close to dead. Oh, he's going back. Okay.
Nice. He killed himself with the mine. Whoop. Nice. Couple carts, pretty spooky, but we finished it. Nice, got the horn. And the brace, perfect. Thank you, game. I think probably a full raw build and just going for his head would have been quicker, but the fire definitely helped with breaking his arms because they're consistently weak to fire the whole hunt. And so, I don't know, I think that, I think that worked pretty well. Maybe once we broke his arms, we should have switched to a more raw focus. Just nailed the head more, but eh, whatever. I'm happy. Twenty minutes dead. Nice. Don't like that the monsters run while limping, but I guess Capcom wants you to fight the monsters 